So, so you faked your age to get your first job in Fiddle on the Roof. You faked your personality to get into drama school. And then you faked yeah. your nationality to get your first job on I, Doctor Who. Face it, acting is all about faking anyway. <laughs> It's about faking it convincingly, you know. So, Con so convincingly, you think it's not a fake, it's completely authentic. So for, for the Doctor Who role, did, did John Nathan Turner know you weren't American or did you actually just become American for that role? He thought I was American because they were only auditioning Americans and Canadians. So um, my agent, who wasn't my agent at the time, had seen me in drama school playing an American part in No, No, Nanette, and had then rung me two weeks after I left drama school saying, I want to put you up for this role in Doctor Who. And after a sort of mistaken identity phone call, because I thought it was a friend playing a prank. I mean, who rings you up after you've left drama school to say, I want to put you up for a, you know, a companion in Doctor Who? That doesn't happen. So I thought it was a joke, but once I realized he was a real person, <laughs> We had this conversation. I said, look, but I'm not American. He said, well, I thought you were. And I didn't think anybody else was in that production. So can you, would you want to, would you be willing to go to an audition and just pretend to be American through the audition? And I went, sure, if you think I'm right for it, you know, then yeah, let's, let's go for it. And on the understanding that once, if I got the part, which was this million to one shot anyway, but if I got it, that it would then be explained to the producer, the director, or whoever was involved, because I knew very little about who was involved, that it would be explained to them that I was, in fact, English, and that would be fine. So I went in doing my American, um, and under the expectation that this would all be revealed, but then it never was. I think my agent got cold feet because I said, once I got it, I said, so I, when are we going to tell them? He said, well, not just yet. Let's get the contract, which, you know, you understand. I understand that. I to sign that. That makes sense. And then I found out I was going on breakfast TV and I went, I can't go on breakfast TV. All my aunts and uncles will be watching. <laughs> They'll probably ring in and complain. Friends will ring in. I can't just go on breakfast TV and pretend to be American. And he went, well, hopefully the contract will come before then. But I don't know, maybe it had or it hadn't. I don't know. But then I had to go on to breakfast TV and I thought, well, I'm just going to mm, dumb it down a bit. I'm going to, you know, dull it out, make it sound not like a very strong accent. I'd been much stronger in the audition. And, um, but I had to do it. And I was terrified. I wasn't just terrified of being on the show. I was terrified somebody was going to ring up and say, she's not American. What's going on? This is just like nonsense. So, and I've no idea why nobody did. Um, so, yeah. And then it was like, well, are you going to tell him before we start rehearsals? Because it was then quite a long gap before we actually started um, the job. And, and there was like three months between me getting it and me doing breakfast TV. So it hadn't been told then. I was like, when are you going to tell them? And he said, well, I think it's best we do the, you know, the first story. And I was like, okay. So I just had to be in rehearsals everywhere all the time using an American accent. And then eventually, you know, we'd, I'd done the first three stories and we had the break. And I went to see my agent and I said, are we ever going to tell him? He said, well, it's, it's awkward too now, isn't it? <laughs> and I was kind of left with a, well, I guess it is, yes. Right, thank you. <laughs> so it did, it felt very, very awkward because I I felt like, it was, it was okay and it was fun doing it in the audition. But doing it for the rest of the time was a real strain. And then I felt like I was lying to people. And, and that felt really odd. Um, and I would just try and avoid it all the time when people would ask you questions. Because also, John Nathan Turner had knew that I was married, but he didn't want me to say to the world that I was married. So I was you know, pretending to be American and single while I was, in fact, you know, 
British and and married. Um, I just felt I was more acting off screen than on, really. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I guess the fact you were already lying for John Nathan Turner, did that make you feel a bit better about the fact that you were lying to him as well? <laughs> I suppose. I suppose. I don't, I don't, you know, the thing is, I don't want to feel like it's lying because I never, I never said I'm American. You just embodied the character. I just went in with an American accent and my agent's the one who said, I have an American actress. I never went in and said, I am American. But of course, you don't need to because the person has arrived and, and they're speaking with American accent. So I didn't have to say that, but it just felt weird. And by the time it got to do breakfast TV where people are interviewing you and saying, so where are you from? And I'm like, oh, this is, this is just horrible. That was, that was when it was like, okay, you know, it's bad enough trying to not look nervous when you're doing an interview, <laughs> let alone not look nervous because you're not actually yourself. <laughs> so who, who worked it out first? Who found out first? Well, the first person who was told was Colin Baker. And I told him. Um, and that's because Colin and his wife, Marion, had invited me uh, and my husband, Scott, to dinner. And Scott was American. He had been a Broadway's musical star. And I'd said, oh, I can't go and lie to my friends. I can't go into their house and do this, this just feels awful. And so he said, well, don't, you know, we'll just take them into our confidence. And so when we got to the door, um, you know, we knocked on the door of their house and we answered the door and I said, hello, in a British accent. And he went, oh, you don't have to put on a British accent to come in, I said, no, <laughs> this is my real voice. And then, you know, we sat down and we chatted and, and I explained how, Yes, you know, obviously my husband's American, but I'm not. And um, uh, and told them the whole story, which they thought was brilliant and wonderful. And Colin was like, I won't say a word. It's my secret. Yeah, it's fine. And so he knew for the following, uh, you know, the rest of the, the filming. It was only after he left and he was then doing an interview with the press. And he said, can I mention it in the press? Um, and I think I'd left by that point too. And I said, yeah, sure. But it just kind of got like, it was kind of a near at the end of his interview, a bit to John Nathan Turner, I felt in a way. It was like, and Nicola's English anyway. No, 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 no. It was all, you know, to do with what had happened with the hiatus and why he'd left and why he wasn't doing regeneration. And, and so it kind of, everyone sort of ignored what was said because it just didn't seem very particularly relevant, but that's when it was announced. And I presume that John Nathan Turner read that and saw that. We never had a conversation about it. He never asked me. He never went, you know, were you lying to me? Were you, were you hiding this? Were you, maybe he thought it was quite funny. He never said, it's a strange one. I'm surprised there wasn't a point where he one day went, but he didn't. So, so you saw you saw John many times after that, but he never raised yeah. it ever. No, never said anything. <laughs>